welcome to the Trauma Treatment Collective vlog. Today we're going to be talking about pacing and why it's so important in trauma treatment. When you think about pacing, you're thinking about ways to track your client and track how well they're doing with their stabilization and safety skills, as well as when they're in their processing, how well they're using those skills in the processing. So stabilization before you get to processing is tracked, and then once you get to processing trauma, then also tracking their safety and stabilization. And really you're pacing a client to make sure that they are able to sustain the level of treatment, the level of activation within their system so that they're able to make progress in their treatment. Um, one of the greatest ways that I have found to help people understand pacing is to look at Dr. Dan Siegel's uh, term, the window of tolerance. And when you're thinking about the window of tolerance, if you've never heard of this before, and for those who have heard of it, it's a review, you're thinking about whether a client is in this window. And the window can have its different capacities. So that window can be this big, it can be this big, but that window is where they are most calm, cool, and collected. And most of our clients are working with a very small window before they are experiencing more hyper-aroused kinds of symptoms, which are more anxious presentation or more hypo arouse, which are more depression kinds of presentation. And so that window is where we want our clients to be. And we definitely want to increase the capacity of that window. We want to grow their capacity to be in that space longer before they get outside of that window. Um, and so when you're thinking about the window of tolerance, it's a really great way to think about pacing because it helps you to know, okay, is my client in that window of tolerance? And if they're not, I need to back off and kind of get back to stabilization or to rework safety um, for my clients so that they can get back in that window of tolerance because when they're outside of that window of tolerance nothing's really happening they are in survival mode at that point when they're hyper aroused or hypo aroused they are trying to survive and so if we keep working with a client who is hyper aroused or hypo aroused we're really not making sustainable change for them um, and so therefore you're really just kind of doing something that you're probably going to more than likely have to go back and do again so that's really important when you're thinking about pacing is to think about okay where are clients at in their window of tolerance um, and being able to help them track that as well as you being able to track that will help you to know whether you need to continue moving forward or whether you need to kind of back off and help them to stabilize, stabilize and then move forward again. Um, so that's a little bit about the way you can think about pacing. Why pacing is so important is, is because number one, it really helps you to um, avoid re-traumatization of a client. Um, that's one of the number one things that I get questions about as far as how do I make sure that I don't re-traumatize my client. And pacing is really a really great way to help you kind of guard against that because as long as you're keeping them in that window of tolerance, then they are able, they're in a good place. Um, but if you keep running them outside of their window of tolerance and holding them outside of their window of tolerance and treatment, then you are at risk for re-traumatizing them because they are no longer in a place where they are regulated. They are in dysregulation, which we know that trauma is basically when we are dysregulated, it's something that happened too much, too soon, and too fast for our systems to process. And when clients are outside of that window, things are happening too much, too soon, and too fast all over again. And so again, they're at risk of re-traumatization. Another thing is, is that they will have less likely have symptoms of PTSD um, when they are staying in their window of tolerance. Again, remembering that hyper aroused is more of that anxious presentation. So that's where we get more of the hypervigilance um, that we see in PTSD. Um, we get more of the uh, just the, the negative thinking and negative cognitions are happening more in that hyper aroused. It can happen in hypo aroused, but a lot of negative thoughts and negative thinking can happen in hyper aroused. And so a lot of symptoms can present um, when they're outside of their window of tolerance. Also with hypo arouse, that's more of the depression symptomology. Um, and so you have clients who are more isolated, who may be more suicidal, um, who are struggling to connect with others. And so therefore you're gonna, their lack of law, you know, lack of interest in things that they used to be interested in. Um, so they have that type of presentation when they're hypo aroused. So if we can keep them in the window of tolerance and if we're pacing them in a good way and keeping them kind of focused on staying in that window of tolerance, it's going to reduce the amount of symptomology they have that categorizes as post-traumatic stress disorder. It also um, decreases their mental illnesses as well, um, things that show up as mental illnesses. So a lot of times uh, clients who are also diagnosed with PTSD 
PTSD, they're also going to be diagnosed with anxiety or depression or um, some combination of the two. And so therefore, if we are working to keep them in their window of tolerance, they're not going to carry as much of the diagnosis criteria for those diagnoses. And so therefore, it reduces their mental illness or the, or the symptoms of their mental illness. And it helps them to kind of maintain those and, and to really keep those under, um, to keep them kind of in, in check is the best thing I can come up with. Um, for lack of better words, it kind of helps them to keep those those uh, diagnoses in check so that they're not running rampant and they're presenting with really high anxiety or really, really significant depression. Um, so those are some reasons why you would want to also work with pacing. The other thing that it does that I think is really important is it creates this sense of empowerment for our clients. When they are able to pace themselves, they're able to track themselves and they see themselves getting close to the edges of their window and they're able to do something to manage that. That's really empowering because a lot of times our clients have come to us and they are stuck in those places of hyper aroused or hypo aroused and they feel like that's their only way of being and so when they're able to kind of see oh i'm getting to the edge and i can do something to kind of pull myself back up or i'm getting to the top and i can do something to pull myself back down then that's really going to be empowering for them to feel like they have some ability to manage the symptoms that they've been struggling with for so long it also helps them to be um have a sense of safety um, if they know that when they are feeling overwhelmed or overactivated, they don't have to stay in that place of too much, too soon, um, too fast kind of feeling um, so that they feel like they're getting ready to be re-traumatized as well, then they can pull themselves out of that and kind of do some regulation and do some things that are going to help them to stabilize. That really allows them to feel safe as they're doing the trauma treatment. So um, one of the things that clients will struggle with is, is I don't want to talk about that, the, the avoidance techniques or tactics. I don't want to talk about that because it's too much or I don't want to talk about that because I don't know if I'm going to be able to come back from talking about that. And so when they are able to realize that, oh, they have the control and they have the ability to maneuver those feelings and to be able to move themselves away from those feelings by using their stabilization skills or their coping skills, then that's a really powerful thing for them to feel like, oh, I can create safety for myself. And as we know, a lot of our clients don't have safety. So the idea of them creating safety for themselves is really empowering. So as you think about pacing and you think about why it's important, I want you to think about the window tolerance, um, which is a term coined by Dr. Dan Siegel. Um, if you Google window tolerance, you'll see some different images and things like that that might be helpful if you are a visual learner. I'll actually link one in the description for you to kind of check out and peruse. Um, but thinking about the window of tolerance and thinking about keeping that client within that window of tolerance, of course, as you work with them, the capacity to stay in that window of tolerance is going to increase. But as it's increasing, helping them to notice when they're getting to the edges and when what they need to do in order to keep themselves in that window of tolerance. Also, as you're doing work with them, noticing when they're outside of their window of tolerance, bringing that to their attention, helping them to regain their window of tolerance so that they can stay stabilized in their treatment. And then also thinking about ways that this is really important because it reduces re-traumatization. It helps clients to feel empowered. It helps them to increase their sense of safety. It decreases symptoms of mental illness and PTSD. Um, just some really awesome things about why pacing is so important and why you need to consider it when you're doing trauma treatment. Hopefully this blog has been helpful in helping you to think through some of those reasons and how you can apply it to your treatment. Um, and maybe you can um, use it as you are doing treatment with your clients. Thank you and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.